Hello, welcome viewers once again to Think Tank TV. My name is Moses Warrego. If you hope to be an entrepreneur, a manager, the owner of a business, or to grow to positions of authority in your organization, it's your day. Because we have a manager in the building who is currently managing a firm that has done so well. Before I commence to bring her on sect, I'd like to say you do well to hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button is a red button written with subscribe down your screen on the right side of your screen. Give us a thumbs up, do us a comment, tell us what you like us to treat and the adjustments you want us to do. We're going to bring her on set to discuss issues around management, leadership, entrepreneurship. Join me to make welcome on set, Ms. Dokas Ataisi. She is the manager of 1106 Hotel situated here in Bani. Good afternoon, Dokas. Good afternoon. Back today. Thank you. So can you say hello to our camera? Hello to the viewers. Okay. Okay. <laughs> welcome on set. Thank you. So good to have you here. Um, we've seen what you're doing. In your hotel we've seen what you're doing in your organization we've heard of your profile which you don't want to blow up so much but i think you're doing so well so we want you to tell our viewers what the secrets give them a background view of management right what are the traits a person should find out himself to be able to know that ah i think i have the management skills perhaps i should begin to train myself towards becoming a manager and per or perhaps what is management all right, thank you. So, I want to start by saying something. Yeah. So, most people think that um, when they give you money, like 2000 Naira, and you go to the market, and then you feel the sad bag when you're coming back, that is management. Yeah. Of course, management has a lot to do about you using small money to get plenty things. But there is very, very much more to it. I'll come back to that way. But first, there are so many people who have defined management based on how they are seeing it and how it's evolving over time. Yeah. And then there are authorities like Henry Fayol, there are authorities like Mary Parker Follett. These are names that you must mention when you're talking about management. We talk about Frederick um, Winslow. There are so many of them. All of them gave definition to management at the time they came in and saw it and saw how it's, it's going. Of course, it doesn't remain like that. It's always evolving. But there's one thing I want to say. Management is a straight way thing. They have basic principle, but you have to have your own ability to know what you want to do at a particular time as a manager. Okay. Now, I want to take us to the definition of this lady is one of the renowned lady in management sector, Mary Parker Follett. He gave a very short but yet intriguing definition about um, management. She said that management is just getting things done by people. It sounds very short, but if you're a manager or you're into management, you see that the definition is very elaborate. It's very big because you have to get things done with things. Yeah. You need money to get things done. You need materials to get things done. You need somebody to get that thing done. There are so many of them. But yet, I want to bring you back to why I was saying it's not just giving you money to go to the market and fill a bag and come back. Management consists of five M's. And these five M's are M's that you cannot do without as a manager. And whenever you want to talk about management, and the five M's are man, materials, machine, um, the method that, that you use to do all these things. And then the and money, 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 which money, is I the think, most yeah. important aspect of it. Yeah. That is important to people who are not into management. Managers don't see money as the most important thing. Managers see man as the most important thing. Exactly. Because all of these other aims revolve around the aim of man. Okay. It's just like I'm making a cycle and I'm putting man in between. So you need the man to operate the machines, 
you need the man to source and allocate the fund, which is the money. You need the man to, uh, to handle the materials around. It's also the man that will sit down and tell you, yeah, this is the method I want to use to achieve this. I know you have a lot. I know you have a lot. Remember, we are time bound, okay? Yeah, I know we are program. time bound. Yeah. I just want to bring this. Um, the background, a good background, background yes. So course. that if I am talking, it you, you, they will like, understand exactly. Yeah, what I just look about. like I'm just on my own. Okay, okay, so, okay. And then let me put the last one, which is the major work of a manager. As everybody saying, you need to plan, you need to, to to organize, you need to direct, and you need to control whatever you're doing. Let me leave you with this. With this, um, thank, thank you so much. That was right. very elaborate and quite deep <laughs> for all that. And our managers, anyway. Okay, so, um, let's talk about the, the I, I asked the question, I talked about the, the qualities the person should begin to see himself in himself to know whether truly I have the management gift. Is it a gift, right? <laughs> okay, so you thought so. I think I can be a manager. The qualities or the signs the person should see to be able to know that. I can be a manager okay so there is one thing i i always say willingness is powerful okay and once you're determined to do something you will do it now there is no strict way like strict way to being a manager like maybe you want to go and learn a skill you, you want to be a carpenter you have to learn how to knock you have to learn how to position the nail once you're willing and you're teachable you will be a manager because if you're ready to learn what your boss is telling you or your reading and your lecturer is telling you this is how you do it to be a manager actually managers can be made you can make them they can be made actually so there is no straight rules the only thing you need to do to yourself is be willing to do it and be teachable okay so anybody who is willing to be a manager um, and is willing to be, learn, learn the five M's, like you talked about. It's not really about the five M's. <laughs> to learn everything that has to do with manager, uh, okay. being a manager, and then you can be a manager. I uh, don't want to make it like uh, it's too high. It's, there's nothing too much in there. Okay, okay. So it's willingness plays a plays a major role, right? Major role. Okay, so let's look at the errors, right? Because when a person says, "I'm willing to be a manager," and we look at the errors people have, managers have. Let's look at the errors managers have that could possibly bring about um, wrong, a wrong management system in an organization. All right. Um, thank you. I'm actually expecting that. You see, okay. because so many people have uh, some misconception about who a manager is supposed to be. You've not been trained. You've not served under someone. You know nothing about management. It's just that there is an opening in one hotel <laughs> and you want to be a manager you want to carry the name you want to make the money and you go there you don't know what managers entail like i told you that the most important thing in the 5m is man when you fail to understand this fact you failed already now the error i am seeing in management these days using this my hotel as an uh, example when you don't know the management styles to apply in the situation then you fail so because you want everything to be done you have the name you've forgotten the fact that you have people you're working with and then you have to bring them in and bring them close you want to do everything yourself there's something called situational management before i go to that there are different types of management styles but the basic is the authoritative, democratic, and less of it. Now, the authoritative is the one that is very strict, the way I want it. Then the less of it is do it your way. The democratic is let's do it together, which is actually the best, if as you say, there is anything like best. But in management, we were taught to know that there is no best style in management. management yeah. Now, one of the authorities in management has to come up after they've already sat down and noticed that there is no best way to manage issues in management. That is, I'm talking about um, Professor Fred um, Fiedler. He said that instead of us to be jumping or use a particular style of management to handle issues, for example, I'll go back to that place. Um, I have a guest. The guest come is complaining today that um, maybe probably he was wrong. 
if you don't want to give him that ability to feel like he's right and you say this my way and then the, the person just looked like okay i'm actually wrong and the person left you that is not a trend manager will now feel oh it works for me today that means the next person that is coming tomorrow whether he's good whether the person is wrong or right you still want to be like this you failed because you may end up pushing the person away forever and then the person will go and tell the next person that hotel don't mind that manager don't even go there they'll embarrass you you will go to that one you carry you don't know these are like chains when it comes to customer so let me go back to what fred said he said that you as a manager you need to know all of these management styles don't forget there are many other more but yeah. the three basics where others you have picked under is the ones I mentioned before, autocratic, democratic, and labor faith. Now, he said that you have to know all these styles. And then look at the situation in front of you. For example, this situation is the one I would say, um, Monday, you will have to handle this issue yourself. That's a laser faith style. And Monday will say, okay, ma, and handle it. Then democratic is, oh, Monday, come, sit down. What happened? What do you think we should do? I think we should do it this way. But the autocratic will come and tell you, I tried it that time, and it works. It must be this way. Okay, so... That so is the it, error. Okay, okay, that's the error in management. Okay. Yeah, now, you, talk, you, you, you talked about democratic as one of the best management techniques, right? Actually, there is nothing like best. Okay, one of the most preferable. Uh -huh, okay, you. one of the most preferable. Mm -hmm. But um, can, we, can we, because you, you're also talking about situational management based on the, the postulation by Paul, uh, Paul Hasse, right? Mm -hmm. In 1967, I heard. We talked about situational management, how leadership can be translated to management and all that. Mm. Don't want to go into all that. But can we know exactly when it is most appropriate to use the autocratic style of management? Well, for me, the way I do my thing, it's, there is actually a time appropriate for you to use autocratic management. And that is when you're standing your ground to protect your image, especially outside. And then to put your staff on their toes, right? On their toes. Mm, okay, I, I, st I now, stumbled now, on wait. Uh, yeah. Wait, don't uh, wait. Now, it's not every time that you put your staff on their toes. Okay. For example, I said, Monday come here, let's talk about this. And the Monday come here or do it your way. Now, I can also say, Monday, why did you do this? I want this to stop forever. And if I see you do this again, You'll be punished for it. That's autocratic. Okay. Okay. So you I, that, can that, use that, it when you want to correct an that, error. Okay. That's exactly what I wanted to talk about yes. because I, in one of my studies, I heard that autocratic is best used during crisis, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. When the situation does not need really to begin to Set look at the yes, you that. now make a decree, right? Or yes. make to give instructions mm. about that. That's the area they, they use. I just wanted to add up to <laughs> what you say with my own little knowledge of. <laughs> Fine. Or, or so, mainly I will say autocratic is actually best when you want to correct an error. Okay, so when you want to or you want to stop a particular trend yes. in your organization. Now, now I think because you, you said autocratic is also a style of management. Yes. Now, some people may want to use it as as enough reason to go into bullying. That's what I want to ask. Mm. There are lots of managers, directors who bully their staff. Hmm. Can we delve into that area a little? How good or how okay is it for people to be bullied? And what advantage or disadvantage does bullying have on the management, productivity, and the growth of an organization? Okay. So first, when you look at the word bullying, it has to do with verbal expression of the scope. And so far, for you as a manager, you feel you have the authority. Because actually what differentiates you as a manager with others is the authority embedded on you to take decisions. And 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 how will I say it now? It is now placed on them that they must respect you. Otherwise, remove the power as a manager, that person can deal with you. Yeah. So for me personally, I don't support bullying. There are other ways you can give instructions or control activities without bullying. 
I cannot come and see you. I said sweep this place and then um I, I come back the next five minutes. You've you've not actually done that. I am supposed to be furious, you know. I can shout out to you and say do it, not to ab abuse you verbally. Once I leave the the right I have to correct you or send you to do something and start abusing you with words, do you know what there are managers that slap? Yeah, that's I ask you to do that. Just giving you. That's abuse. That's what, what, that, that's a different it's area. Also, it's also bullying. Okay. Now I come and say, dude, this what is wrong with you? Are you mad? What abusing that, words on your staff? I, that is bullying. It's not yeah. part of your job as a manager. Okay. And you're not supposed to be doing that. So what impact would that have of on course. the growth productivity of an organization as it is? Oh my god. To to you as a manager, you may be seeing that it's working for you. But I'm using my hotel as an example. You cannot be everywhere. If you want to be at the reception, what about when you leave? Because they are they interface with the public. An hotel without a guest is not an hotel. It is a mere house. So whatever you impact on your workers, they will most likely what throw it back to your exactly. guests. Exactly. Okay, so that's... you will come and tell them, I want this. If you don't do this, they will blah, blah, blah. You say whatever you want to say. And a guest come and they will be like, okay, yes. After all, I will be fired. That's all. Yes. Um, please, can I see your manager back? She do office. I don't want that trouble. That is not what your guest is, is supposed to be hearing. Yes. You get. So to you, you will feel it's getting things done for you. But actually, the impact on your staff. Remember I told you that among all the ends, the man is the most important exactly part of, I and your staffs are the man, man they are the man okay and whenever they are they are affected their self-esteem is affected their their the ability to think that they're actually contributing is affected you've lost it well somehow you can use it in the production industry where you know that if you resume work by five 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 um, nine am i'm sorry by five pm you close and so you're there telling them Took it this way, push it that way, do it that way, and, and then like a structure. Gone. So, so obviously the bullying pattern is not. It's not, not advisable. It's not advisable. We we are we are actually time, but I wanted to go into micromanaging, then the functions of a manager. But I think we can discuss that in our next episode. Perhaps we hope we'll be able to get you here yeah. with your busy schedule. <laughs> Bring you on and say to discuss uh, discuss these areas again. But but for for the for the sake of this program, right? I like us to conclude by asking you this question. You know, a lot of people have the different definitions of success, right? People <laughs> think about success differently based on their interpretation, based on their exposures. Mm. Can we know what your definition of true success is, please? Wow, success. I know. Like you rightly said, so many people have different definition about success. To, to the general public, is success is when you have a lot of money and cars and you have fame, they be very successful. Because he has, yeah, whenever you hear his name, everybody are. But for me, in my own little way, I will, I will say success is when you're able to transfer what you know to the next person. Hmm. Transferring what you know to Yeah, me. because if everybody is impacting the next person close to them, I think the world would be a better place. So so I can make bold to say you're a successful woman today. <laughs> thank come. you so much, Dr. Cass. Thank you. Thank you. So viewers, you've heard <laughs> it. We're right. going to be taking on this section to our next week. We'll be talking about different other areas, things that would give you insight into the management world of which you obviously hope to become in the future. Thank you so much for hooking up. Remember to do the subscribe button, hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, do a comment to us, and we'll be here to serve you. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, Bye. for now.